the amendments, Mr. Murphy. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. I thank the, the ranking member for yielding. Uh, one of the amendments in there I'd like to talk about here, and that has, according to a RAND study, there are more than several hundred thousand potential cases of post-traumatic stress disorder in our veterans from operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. And suicide rates among them are also higher than that of the general population. The Department of Defense has rightly doubled its budget for treatment and research of PTSD and traumatic brain injury and set high for health providers. And although care has also been supplemented through TRICARE and contract providers, the military remains understaffed to meet the needs. Combat veterans should not be placed on a waiting list, especially dealing with mental health problems and suicide. It's, and service members who need care can only get care if they are near care. Now, a huge investment has been made into many of the great clinicians and medical services at the dawn of their careers. Stipends, bonuses, educational expenses are paid in hopes we can recruit and retain them for 20 or 30 years, although many do not remain that long. Sometimes we discourage those from signing up later in their careers because of their age and they cannot remain for 20 years or so. Yet there are those who are at the peak of their careers who we could look to to fill not only the immediate needs with highly skilled and ready trained experiences, but to provide mentorship and training to those starting out in their medical and behavioral medicine careers. This amendment simply calls upon the Surgeon General of the Army, Navy, Air Force to report on other incentives that can be offered to recruit and retrain, retain those with 20 or more years of non-military clinical experience to serve in active or reserve duty. This might include, but is not limited to offering a 10-year retirement incentive instead of the traditional 20 or 30-year retirement. I might add, we are very proud of our servicemen and women, and I want to make it very clear that uh, all of us in Congress, and I know all the military, is absolutely dedicated uh, to making sure that we take care of all of their wounds, whether they are the visible or invisible wounds of war. We compliment, we are proud of their service, and we will continue to support them. And along those lines, I hope my colleagues will also support this amendment. With that, I yield back. Gentleman from Missouri.